Hello friends, uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, infrastructure as a service. It is one of the service model uh, which is IIS and we call it as a infrastructure as a service. So we'll uh, study uh, all the three service models one by one. So let's start first with the infrastructure as a service. So what exactly IIS is, uh, first we need to understand that and then we'll proceed further so guys uh, you know till this point of study uh, time we have studied that okay what is cloud computing and what are the five essential characteristics of cloud computing so in the definition itself uh, nist has said that okay there are three service models uh, one is infrastructure as a service and then platform as a service and then uh, software as a service to understand the infrastructure as a service because in in cloud uh, we are getting some kind of services from the cloud service provider so first in all the three models we'll be comparing it with the uh, on premise uh, data center let's say if if you will be managing all these things in your data center then what kind of services you will be managing in case of if you are using infrastructure as a service so it is very very important guys to understand uh, if, whether you want to run your infra in case of AWS Azure or Google Cloud and in really to uh, dig into the technical discussions or, uh, or to save money while uh, deploying any kind of service if you have a better idea that okay what exactly each service is you will be able to save money and uh, uh, run infra in a very good condition so let's say if uh, if it is on premise uh, you are maintaining a data center then uh, you know, then what you are doing then you are managing all the things you are having a space networking storage you are purchasing those servers then uh, installing uh, your vms os middleware databases and then data and uh, then uh, deploying the applications really to run your business now just having this picture into mind so how does uh, you know what services we are getting in case of if we are getting an infrastructure as a service so in case of infrastructure as a service all these layers till virtualization uh, from networking to virtualization are managed by the vendor when we say vendor means cloud service provider it could be aws it could be um, google or azure any it, uh, any cloud vendor if you are taking infrastructure as a service till virtualization they'll be managing you need not to take care of any networking and the how they're managing the storage their cooling and whatever the you know physical security all those things you are not taking care of that so what you will be taking care of is uh, so in this case uh, you will be taking care of all the layers above the uh, you can say the uh, this os middleware runtime data application so from os to applications you will be managing and all the below layers will be managed by the vendors so guys it is very crucial to understand let's say if you are performing any kind of assessment like pci dss or you know some gxp assessment in that case you really need to understand that okay till what layer you are having a control so that you can make the assessment uh, accordingly and the same type of report can be shared with your customers so uh, so this is the comparison if you'll say uh, that uh, actually the part which earlier was being managed by you now you are only uh, responsible for managing the uh, layer which is above the os so guys if i'll ask the question let's say that uh, if you are using infrastructure as a service so and one more thing guys so infrastructure service uh, you know you can take it from amazon you can take it from uh, uh, Google Cloud or from Azure. Some people say that Amazon is an IIS or uh, Azure is an PaaS. So that is a wrong statement. If you are getting all the services, let's say you know all these services are being managed by any cloud vendor and you are taking care of all these services above OS, then it is an infrastructure as a service. So it is not like one cloud vendor is a PaaS or IIS. It might be good in providing services uh, like platform as a services, right? But it is not like they are only totally. Uh, pass so uh, currently both type of services are being provided by the AWS as well as Azure so let's say if uh, you know there is a you know the question that okay who will be managing the security patching uh, for the OS so if it is an infrastructure as a service you means as a customer or as an organization you will be managing the security or installing the patches onto the instance so it is totally your uh, you know your ball of game 
so you know how customers access the IAS infrastructure as a service uh, you know through the internet and uh, they can access the cloud portal like you have seen in the previous demo just log into the console and we have provisioned the VM we have chosen the IAS and then all those settings we have uh, provided the storage space and a virtual hard disk and our server was ready so let's say for example that uh, you know user can log into the AWS console or Azure console and it can you know choose the virtual machine and then uh, install that particular uh, OS deploy the uh, you know database and create the storage buckets that can be used for backup or uh, whatever kind of workload uh, you want to have in your uh, cloud infrastructure right so for IS customers uh, so they can uh, you know provide us uh, provide the services with help of which you can actually monitor the type of uh, you know load you are having and the cost associated with it you can monitor the performance and uh, you know balance the network traffic uh, you can have your own disaster recovery site uh, configured so all these things are uh, you know you can do if you are having the infrastructure as a service so again uh, but try to have this diagram in uh, in in your mind in that case uh, you know you'll have a solid understanding of all the three service models because in each and every model it is the difference of responsibilities only so as you move forward from infrastructure to pass to saas your responsibility is is getting decreased and the responsibility of cloud vendor is getting increased so what are the benefits of IS? No capex or very uh, no or very less capex involved means you are not doing any kind of uh, you know uh, investment uh, before uh, beforehand while provisioning your servers or running your business. You are just going onto the AWS console or cloud providers website and you are just provisioning the uh, services whenever it is required. So another example just quickly deploy your infra and you will be paying only for what you will be using if you have used the servers let's say for five hours or storage for five hours you'll be paying for that only you're not paying any kind of upfront cost so another case like i said the cloud provider is responsible for maintaining the maintenance of all the hardware and virtualized services means all the layers which are which were below the os cloud provider will be maintaining that so you will be as an organization they are saving a huge amount of money because uh, in most of the organization if you're having a data center then you're paying uh, a space uh, depending on where your office is then you know you are having those uh, you know power and generators you require then cooling equipments then you know maintenance of the data centers then you need engineers then uh, you know another layer is uh, this uh, security of the data center you need guards you need 24 by 7 monitoring of cctv just imagine how much cost organizations are saving so what is includes your uh, the ip addresses network connections uh, firewalls bandwidth and all your load balances they are under the is so this was the first service model uh, which is infrastructure as a service uh, so this is it uh, in this lecture friends uh, we'll meet you in the next lecture Thank you. Thank you for watching.